We have the tapes, folks. The footage is out. The perfect match finale is here, and the big cheating scandal from this season has been blown wide open. Plus, the winners, the perfect match for the season, will blow your mind. But, like, in a way that will have you going... <laughs> You serious? So essentially, where the last bit of episodes left off, Harry and Jess here were in absolute disarray. Mostly because of an event that happened where all the men and women were separated so that new people could come in and test the waters with them while everyone's current matches weren't there to spoil the fun. And it was at that event where Melinda here swears that Harry kissed her and said stuff like, Are you, are you, are you ready for some babies? I put a baby in you. I'm like, cool. And he goes, they'll come out handsome and tall and athletic. Harry, however, says she's blowing smoke and just trying to get her 15 minutes of fame from him, while all of Harry's boys who were there are refusing to speak and going, Johnny Tight Lips, where'd they hit you? I ain't saying nothing. But well, what do I tell the doctor? Tell him to suck a lemon. Now at first, Jess defends Harry and goes after Melinda, but now she's sitting here wondering what to do with Harry. Because yes, they've both stated that they love each other and they're each other's perfect match, but something Melinda said earlier is really bugging Jess. As Melinda stated, Harry told her he'd put a baby in her after she said she wanted kids. Meanwhile, Harry had also confessed to Jess that he said this. I did look at her stomach and I said it wouldn't look good if there was if you were pregnant. But it was not in that sense. And I said, you said it. Which makes it seem like Harry is telling Jess a half truth to make him seem more believable. The only reason I'm doubting what you're saying is because of the, I would put a baby in your comment. And you said, I would put a baby in you. Absolutely not. I say it on every podcast. There's nothing worse than someone only telling you half the truth, just enough to cover their ass. So Jess just can't move forward. She does not want to be humiliated, and she does not want to be in a relationship where she's constantly questioning her man. I have to stand on what I believe in and what's important to me. I do not want to match with you tonight. Well, with that, both Harry and Jess leave the show, and I'm just going, there are like two days left. How on earth are any of these couples going to be a perfect match? I mean, most of the couples are barely hanging on or are devastated. Meanwhile, Nick Lachey's like, no, no, no. Get over it. Get over it. <laughs> and then he distracts us by pivoting the show into a survivor style immunity challenge, AKA the final compatibility challenge for the season where couples have to answer questions about each other in order to earn planks to cross this bridge the fastest. Questions like, how many people has your partner slept with? Elise, guess one to 20. Brighton, 100 plus. Okay, Brighton, sleeping with 100 plus people in the same room during Squid Game does not count. Micah said 20 to 50, Izzy. What is the actual 100 plus? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Iz. Wait a minute, Izzy the Rizzy with 100 plus notches on his bedpost too? Man's body count is higher than his credit score. Ultimately though, Tulu and Chris win and get to go to the boardroom to pick new matches, even though there are only two days left. Like, there is no way any match here would be voted as the perfect match with just two days left, right? That would be completely stupid, ridiculous, and make this show seem even more embarrassing than it already is, and I'm just gonna mark the timestamp right now to come back to this moment. So, Tolu and Chris send Izzy and Christine on dates, and the second Christine leaves, Kaz is suddenly like... I've made a huge mistake. I'm starting to feel like I might have made a mistake. All day I've been thinking about Micah and how he was. I miss her. And so he goes up to Micah after all that business from the other night and impulse matching with someone else, and now he's going... If it's not you and you're like... No, I'll walk out the door and I'm just, that's it. Imagine being Christine kissing your man goodbye because he got sent on a date and then coming back to hear that. Now on these dates, Christine meets with Nigel here and Izzy gets a date with none other than... Everybody! Yeah, everybody. Yep, Jess is back, so much for leaving the show. And pretty much her date with Izzy can be summed up like... I'm so sorry, I'm about to just sweat all over you. No offense to him, your sweat dripping right in my mouth would have been not my first choice. However, Izzy is gentlemanly and essentially does the absolute bare minimum to earn a match with Jessica, so he's going... Minimum champion! Like, 
I wasn't uncomfortable with us being as close as we were. The next morning. We feel after talking, we agree that it's best for us to unmatch. And well, basically all the couples are still in disarray. Christine is infuriated with Kaz, who now has rematched with Micah, so she matches with Nigel. Steven and Alara have a brief fight over Steven wanting to play Spin the Bottle, Chris and Talu are working back from Chris's transgressions the other day, and Brighton and Elise have been together for like one night. So the show, for the final day, sends everyone out on nice romantic dates where we hear such beautiful sentiments like Talking about the future right together, it kind of made me a little bit hard, I'm not gonna lie. But after Steven and Alara confess their love for each other I just haven't had anyone that treats me the way you have and I just appreciate you a lot. Well I love you and that's just what you do when you love someone. I'm thinking people are for sure going to vote them for perfect match, right? I mean, of all the ludicrous outcomes here, this is the least ludicrous. Otherwise, maybe Tolu and Chris? So, it's now the big moment. Time to crown the season 2 perfect match in this final tribal council. And as people make their cases as to why they should win, others have some drama to get off their chest. Sorry, Tolu, I love you. Here it comes. I have something to say about your man, though. My issue was the deception and the lying. It was one of the biggest reasons why you sent me home that night, and I wasn't able to meet anybody else in the house. Okay. Well, bro really got called out for being deceptive and went... Oh, okay. I matched with Dominique night one. We just didn't get along. I feel like she maybe doesn't challenge your ego. You're maybe a little bit attracted to egotistical... Men. Hey, I mean, while well, Harry here is really coming in acting like the penitent man to try and get Jessica back, certainly Brighton is like, ego personified. However, the man who takes the most heat this night is Kaz. Christine said to me that she wanted an, an alpha. Obviously, she's kind of just gone with the opposite. Just don't confuse like my kindness and humbleness for not being an alpha. Period. Speak your truth. I don't know. Call it intuition, but something tells me there aren't going to be a lot of votes for Kaz and Micah tonight. I mean, I think you're the biggest scammer sitting here today. And if there's anybody that you would make a perfect match with better than anybody else, it'd be the devil himself. <laughs> so that's all I have to say. And I mean, tempers are out there. Even Steven and Alara take some heat. What's your take on, on their relationship? Yeah, so I'm going to keep it real. I'm not gonna keep it too nice. I hope you guys enjoy it while it lasts. So I said my truth. So this leaves a lot of questions as to who's gonna be getting the votes tonight. But before we get to that, Harry comes forward to speak and apologize to Jess. And as he does so, the show dishes the tapes. The smoking gun they had this whole time on everything that happened with Melinda. I get you pregnant. You mean pregnant? I'm 30, I could go for a few babies. <laughs> Treacherous kiss, I wanted to just dog your face out. Oh yeah, I wanna f*** you. What? I knew it. Stop. Like many of y'all in the comments theorized, the reason they didn't have exact footage of the big kiss was because they went near the bathrooms where the crew is not allowed to film. Did you guys get footage of me and Melinda kissing or no? I didn't mean to do it. So essentially, as it comes down to it, the story for how everyone votes for the perfect match winner can be summed up by this moment. You know what? You guys all suck. And when they do announce the winner, I was actually floored. Winning by just one vote, you all have chosen the perfect match. Christine and Nigel. Oh. Unbelievable. The couple that went on their first date, like, yesterday, is the perfect match. Hold on a sec, what did I say earlier? Like, there is no way any match here would be voted as the perfect match with just two days left, right? That would be completely stupid, ridiculous, and make this show seem even more embarrassing than it already is. Guys, once again, congratulations on being voted the... Perfect match! You know what? This is actually exactly how this season should end. It's the ending this show deserves. Christine and Nigel get to go on their trip, and we even get a little update from Harry and Jess. So right now, he's working on wooing me. I wonder when this is gonna come out. We're gonna be strong by then. We're probably gonna marry. Ah, a perfect ending to this perfect season of Perfect Match. And you couldn't see it, but but I used air quotes on, on all those perfects. So that's it for this video on the perfect match finale. 
Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take out. You all have chosen the perfect match, Christine and Nigel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you serious?